we're talking about today about a common problem where the patient has uh, some lo lower front teeth that are a little loose uh, either from bone loss or uh, past gum disease and bone loss um, this patient here has a couple of teeth that he was concerned about that have gotten loose um, this one here and this one here especially but all these lower anteriors are a little bit loose. So we're gonna do, we're gonna bond these teeth together. Now, some of you may remember a product called Ribond. Uh, we don't have Ribond in stock, but we have uh, another product called BioSplint. And it, it looks like this. It's basically a ribbon, a piece of ribbon that will absorb the composite material and leave a nice flat uh, splinting surface to go from cuspid to cuspid. So the first thing you do, just like when you're doing a composite, is just etch the, uh, well, actually the first thing we do is scrub it with pumice, and then we etch the legal parts of each tooth and then we'll rinse it off and bond it just like you're doing a regular composite. Okay, after etching, then you bond, of course, just like you're doing a composite filling. Now, I, I like to saturate the uh, splinting material with a flowable composite before I put it on here just to get it, get it wet. So, hand me the flowable. While she's tearing this, I'll we'll put some flowable on here. Just to kind of penetrate. We'll go over here. Yeah. So I'm out of her way. So I'm blind myself too. I don't want to cure this yet. I'm just kind of getting it wet with some flowable composite. And then I'm gonna put it just a, a dot on, a little bit on each two. Using some cotton pliers, we'll set this on the inside of each tooth. And then we have these little clips that we can use to hold the ribbon in place. Now, He's got some gaps between his teeth, so we won't be able to use this on every every contact, but we can use it on a couple of them just to hold it in place. It's important to make sure these are wet before you put it on. Because this, this stiffness between it, especially if there are gaps between the teeth, that stiffness between them is pretty important to strengthen that, that ribbon. And then just for retention purposes, put a, put a little bit on the back just to do a little bulbous button on the back of each tooth hold it in place this stuff is real hard to cut with a, a hand piece because it's it's fiberglass so it starts shredding so you want to make sure you don't have 
Okay, we finished the splint. Uh, basically, I haven't polished it or anything, but we're going to have him test it with his tongue and make sure everything's nice and smooth. You don't have to polish it if you did it, you know, if you got it nice and smooth to begin with, but you can use your normal composite polishing procedures to finish it out. And of course, you have to educate your patient on using the floss threader to get underneath these. Uh, with this much space, uh, floss picks might be a better option along, along with flossing. A combination of the two to keep it clean. That's basically what it, how it should turn out. It's cosmetic and as far as strength, I can't move these teeth at all. They're nice and, nice and firm and hold them together so when he's biting into a sandwich or tearing off some ribs, he doesn't have to worry about pulling a teeth out. <laughs> 